everybody's heard the expression blow by the term blow by, but what does it really mean? It's the gas that gets blown by the piston ring during the combustion process. And I'll show you a little diagram. But once that fuel, reactive fuel, raw fuel, gets into the oil, that causes all the problems, and I'll lay them all out. Um, deposits in the ring grooves can wear out your cylinders, lower compression. Deposits in your valve guides can stick your valves or wear out your valve guides. Real nasty. <coughs> Besides the um, fuel uh, getting into the oil, which for, for my engine, I, I have a 210 with an IO520, and I'm not, my engine burns 15 gallons an hour-ish, and my engine might put between 0 0.05 and 0 0.1 gallons per hour of liquid fuel into the crankcase. Okay, so a little bit less than a tenth of a gallon. It's a huge volume of liquid. Most of it goes right out the reader. But a little bit of it stays in the crankcase. That causes all the problems in these general aviation engines. But besides the fuel, when you burn a gallon of fuel, you manufacture approximately a gallon of water. Most of it goes right out the exhaust. But, like the fuel, it gets blown by the piston ring, also this water. And the engines, um, they have large clearances, and um, that will give you an equilibrium oil uh, water concentration of 100 ppm to 1,000 ppm of water in the oil at any time. So what is blow-by? You've got piston coming down, sucking in the air-fuel mixture, piston going up, compressing the, the charge. You have the spark plugs light off just before the piston gets to top dead center. Pressure's going up from before combustion, hundreds of, or 150 psi, to now peak combustion pressures are uh, about 900 psi. But it starts blowing by the, the fuel past the piston rings as this pressure gets higher and higher. First you get raw fuel. That's the stuff that is first in line to get to get blown by. Then you have a narrow stretch of stuff that started burning, but then it's forced past the piston rings and the reaction is quenched and stops. Um, and then finally you have fully burned fuel and so that puts a lot more heat, water, uh, in, into the, uh, and, and the lead bromide particles into the oil. It's this stuff that causes all the problems, the reactive stuff. You're, you're making an argument for proper leaning, then. I will. <laughs> so what do piston deposits do? Well, they um, have a, a, a huge impact on the uh, heat transfer capability in the engine. So once you start forming a deposit on the underside of this piston, oil splashing against there cannot pull as much heat away. So therefore, that deposit grows thicker and thicker, and it's a runaway condition, which is what led to this engine being uh, disassembled in a very young age. Would you, uh, just a brief question, but relating to that, when you're spraying oil on the back side of the piston, that it seems to me that that small amount of oil must be flashing temperature up near a smoke point. Um, not quite, but it's, it's very hot. People, people say that the turbocharger puts the, the, the stress, major stress on the oil. Right. The oil going through a turbocharger only increases about 25 degrees, nothing. The oil on hitting the back of the piston goes from some temperature to 400 and some degrees. Right. So, and that's what flashes off the water, which is why I recommend flying your airplane to to, to get rid of excess water in, in, in the engine. But um, it's, it's the, the undersides of the piston that heat up the oil and stress the oil more than anything else. It's, it's hundreds of times more than, say, a turbo jet. That brings up a question. How often do you recommend this, this engine be run? I'll, I'll, get, I'll get into that more, more also. Um, more deposits and this is an example of everything that could go wrong, did go wrong. 
Um, we have a stuck top compression ring. We have a rusty uh, sludged up oil control ring. You can see these, these grooves and the, the spring behind there, and it's all sludged up. And then we have piston scuffing because the person didn't want the uh, engine to warm up before applying full power. So, Are rings normally rotating all the time? Rings uh, oscillate in and out depending on the, where they are in the stroke and which cycle, but they also rotate. Um, about two to three RPM in most engines. The, at least the, the compression rings, the oil control ring, not so much because it's, it's spring line. What causes them to rotate? Imperfections in the manufacturing process because you don't know if they're rotating clockwise or counterclockwise. Um, we've looked at them rotating and we don't know. the cross why. on the cylinder too, putting a little bit of. It doesn't rotation. take much force because when that ring is floating, right. and it doesn't take much force to actually move it. So, um, yeah, it can be any of the forces acting on it. But. So, here's an example of that cross hatching uh, on a brand new cylinder. And um, when you break in a, a cylinder, this is what you're doing you're removing the peaks from this cross hatching. So the rings are moving up and down this way and removing the high spots on these um, uh, cross hatching marks. And the cross hatching is put in because you have an oil film that resides in these little tiny grooves. You can just feel this with your, uh, your fingernail. So it's, you know, it's substantial, but, um, so, but that, that's what's important to, to engine longevity is good cross hatching, properly done cross hatching, uh, proper break in and holding that oil film. Here's an example, an all too common example of uh, a rust polish pattern, worn out continental cylinder <coughs> mid time. Um, you can see examples of rust in here, and the cross hatching is completely gone. This engine is pumping lots of oil, you know, compression from the 30s or 40s, and totally worn out. 